Last time on Left Behind. I would like you to pray that I will say what God wants me to say. Our captain believed Jesus was the Messiah. My name is Rabbi Zon ben Judah. I speak to Jews in Israel and around the world. He is not a traitor to his faith. He is, please leave us alone. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. This is Rabbi ben Judah. Rabbi, my name is Eli. Based on Tribulation Force, the second book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 22 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Crazy. I'm in Israel for the day, then back to New Babylon tonight. I'll be home by the weekend. You know, Bruce is over there. I know, but it's too risky to try to meet him. Carpathia's got eyes everywhere. His latest email update says he's trying to get into Teddy Collick Stadium for tonight's meeting. <laughs> that meeting is really rattling Carpathia's cage. I wonder if Buck would know how to get him in. Hmm. Call him in New York and see. And it couldn't hurt. Another figure seeking to help calm society is newly installed Pope Peter. Yesterday, he outlined his concerns regarding religious intolerance. Tolerance, unity, and love will prevail. However, it must be said, our greatest foes are the militant Christians. They believe Jesus is the only way to God. To arbitrarily say that the Bible is the final authority represents the height of intolerance. That is why we now consider adherence to that false doctrine heretics. May I help you? Ah, uh, I, I was looking for the house of the rabbi. You are one of his followers? Uh, I am a follower of Christ. Come in, quickly. Huh? It is not safe for you here. I'm not worried about my safety. God is protecting me. You sound like my husband. Then I do have the right place. Is your husband here? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Bruce Barnes. I'm a pastor from America. If you are a pastor, why were you left behind? Uh, it's, it's, it's a long story. Uh, suffice it to say that I finally recognize the truth. How do I know I can trust you? Uh. The person who gave directions to your home. He's a mutual friend, Buck Williams, the writer. Tell me about your ministry. Well, uh, I'm here to set up house churches. From my reading of prophecy, our assembling could be outlawed in a, a year to 18 months. So I'm taking this that model... That day may that... be here more quickly than you think. The uh, new pope is already speaking out against us. Yes, I, I heard. I believe God wants me to expand this small group idea. Take it all over the world. But it has to start here, in Israel. With the evangelists. Yes, yes. Eli and Moshe have asked my husband to speak. And, uh. Uh, it is an honor I would prefer someone else's husband to have. Hmm. Here, take this to the stadium tonight. You will be in the press boxes. You must be discreet. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this this is a direct answer to prayer. Oh, praise God. Praise God. From from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. God bless you. Praise Him above the heavenly host. We have been 
been gathered from the twelve tribes of Israel, the chosen ones of the Almighty, and we have been given the high calling of proclaiming His name to every nation, every tribe, every tongue. We do not trust in numbers. We do not trust in the power of persuasive speech. We trust in the name of the Lord, our God. At whose name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Please give your attention now to our beloved brother, Son Ben Judah. Dear ones, how I praise God for each of you. Throughout history, we have been scattered throughout the world. Now God has called us together to be his As I look over this sea of faces from every conceivable background, I am moved like never before. I am watching the fulfillment of what I've been teaching before my very eyes. I, I see God's plan to carry the gospel to, to the ends of the earth. But my friends, be warned. Though the message is being accepted like never before, though there is coming an incredible soul harvest, there is also coming great trouble. I will write you more tomorrow. Though the message is being accepted like never before, though there's coming an incredible soul harvest, there's also coming great trouble. I will write you more tomorrow. Wow, that's powerful stuff. I'd give anything to be there. You could go with your dad on one of his junkets for Carpathia. I'd rather go with you. <laughs> well, maybe you will. <sighs> maybe one day you'll go everywhere I go. Hey, that sounds pretty close to a proposal. Hey, wait a second, wait a second. I <laughs> said maybe... <laughs> I got my bases covered, you know. <laughs> What's the matter, tough guy? Do I frighten you? Ooh, absolute and utter terror. Good. <laughs> That's the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any news on your dad's situation? Uh, I know it's tough on him flying out of New York here while living in Chicago. I see it every time he puts his uniform on. Hmm. I told him the other day I was worried. I even offered to move to New York with him. Really? What did he say about that? He accused me of having ulterior motives. Like, oh, I don't know. You? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ulterior about that. Uh -huh. Oh, guess what? We're finally meeting Amanda for lunch. Hmm. Remind me, of uh, Amanda... Amanda White. She became a Christian because of a Bible study my mom led. Oh, that's right. Not sure what to think about this gal. <laughs> Should be interesting. I've wanted to meet for the longest time, Captain Steele, because I... Rayford, please. Yes, uh... <sighs> You know, Rayford feels a little too familiar for me. Do you mind, Mr. Steele? Uh, whatever you prefer. <laughs> anyway, your wife was the sweetest person. So soft-spoken. And she was totally in love with you. That was clear. She was the sole reason I came as close as I did to becoming a Christian. Before the rapture. But obviously you didn't. No. The vanishings woke me up, if you will. But Irene was the reason I finally came to the Lord. When I couldn't remember her name, and none of the other ladies from the Bible study were still around, I'd lost my family, so it's been hard. Were you in a church? I'd been in one my whole life. Then my husband was invited to an outing at a friend's church. Came home, insisted we check out the services there. I don't mind telling you, I was not comfortable. They continually made a big deal out of being saved. <laughs> I can relate. And before I could get my little mind around the idea, I was the only one in my family who wasn't saved. Mm. So I pretended. But my family knew. 
They kept encouraging me to go to this woman's Bible study, so I finally gave in. Mm. And I was sure it was going to be a frumpy middle-aged women's meeting, you know, diapers, minivans, and Bibles, but... Your mother was... Um... <clears throat> I'm sorry, would you excuse me a moment? Oh, sure, sure. I'm really glad you got to come today. I wanted to ask you a question, and I didn't want to, well, break up the study. Oh, no, no. Anytime something's on your mind, jump in. Well, I'm just not comfortable with all the talk about being saved and lost. Each person has to see their need for a savior, and everybody... I don't get the savior part. I know I'm not perfect, nobody is, but if God is love, how could he not accept somebody who's really trying? Well, you admitted you're not perfect. Far from it. You've just agreed with what the Bible says. All have sinned. All have fallen short of God's glory. That's what they keep saying. Your problem isn't that you don't understand sin. You just don't understand who God is. He is perfect. He knows there's no way we'll ever measure up to his standard. But because of his love... Here, Romans 5.8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Since we couldn't measure up, he did. And you just believe that? Is that all? You put your faith in God and what he's done for you. I can show you how, if you'd like. I told her I wasn't ready. I wanted to think about it. And she warned me not to put it off. She said she'd be praying for me. Did you go back? Did you ever talk to her again? That night, my family disappeared from their beds. I'm glad we took the time for that. Turned out pretty nice, actually. I feel bad, though. I, I wish I'd been a little more open-minded. Oh, first impressions aren't always correct. For hardly knowing her, Amanda had a lot of insight into Mom. Mm. Mm. She's been through a lot herself. Mm. Ah, I'm glad she's plugged into the church. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting to know her better. Really? Mm -hmm. Somebody interested in somebody? <laughs> you mean romantically? Well, it's just an observation. Uh -huh. Single lady, single man, mm -hmm. both attractive, both available. Oh, you think I'm attractive? <laughs> well, Chloe, how sweet. Just don't let her see you in your uniform. So what? I'm chopped liver and jeans and a button-down? Dad, this vanity is a whole new thing uh. for you. And I'm not sure how to deal with it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Look, let's talk about something less controversial, like where I'm going to live. Less controversial? Uh -huh. Look, Dad, I want you to do what's right for you. You don't need the pressure of being here just because of me. Buck had to move to New York when he started working for Carpathia, and we're getting along just fine. I'm assuming my assignment stays the same, I'm committed to making it work from here as long as I can. Especially now that there's another reason to stay around. Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'm sorry. I'll stop. Just like you did with me and Buck. Oh. Oh, yeah, you remember that? <laughs> And so, it is my pleasure to welcome the man who single-handedly has made this dedication possible. His Excellency, Nikolai Karpetia. Thank you. Thank you all. And I welcome the many thousands of you who have made pilgrimages here for this important day. For centuries, members of the Jewish race have dreamed of this occasion. Nikolai! You are to be commended for executing such exquisite craftsmanship. Nikolai! And nothing can mar your achievement here. Nikolai! Your speech may be eloquent, but your lips be lie! Have you no dignity? Have you no sense of propriety? We gather today to dedicate this temple and to dedicate ourselves to the process and the prospect of peace among all people of faith. Nikolai, you who speak of peace will yourself one day defile and desecrate this temple. That is utter nonsense. 
Is there not a military leader in Israel with the fortitude to silence these two? Sir, we have become a weaponless society thanks to you. These two are weaponless as well. Subdue them. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. The body of believers is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The global community is committed to supporting its friends in Israel. Quiet! Israel has rebuilt the temple to hasten the return of their Messiah, not realizing that she built it apart from the true Messiah, who has already come. Israel has constructed a temple of rejection. Do not wonder why so few Jewish evangelists are from Israel. Israel remains largely unbelieving and will soon suffer for it. I will speak to you and I will lead you in this dedication if you desire. But I will not stand for this indignity. Do you wish to listen to me or to them? But God himself, your blood sacrifices shall turn to water, and your water drawing to blood. No, 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 no. I want you to write it the way you see it. Don't worry about what anybody says. I'll take the heat if there's a problem, okay? All right. All right. When can you get the story to me? Mr. Williams? Uh, hang on a minute, Brad. Um, it's kind of important. No, no. I don't want to wait until the weekend. I want to run it tomorrow while it's fresh. It's all right. I will wait. The second you finish it, I want... Uh, McLean, hang on a minute. You're free to finish your call. It can wait. I heard of a disturbing development yesterday. I am sure you have reports already from your myriad sources. Regarding... The temple sacrifice in Israel. Through some sleight of hand, the blood from the sacrifice turns to water. And the water drawn in another ceremony turns into blood. You don't say. Now, uh, we may quibble as to where that story will be placed in Global Community Weekly, or if it should be included at all. But... I want to encourage uh, you... Mr. Carpathia, this is exactly what you said you would not do. I am not asking you to change a story or your editorial policy. I am asking you to see this for what it is. This is an intrusion into a sacred event. I respect your opinion, sir, but I can't ignore the facts. Hmm. And what if the magazine you control is the only one with that information? Would you not hurt your credibility... I understand what you're saying. Good. If you are a wonderful journalist, Buck, the best, I would not want to see anything mar that sterling reputation. Goodbye. McLean, you still there? All right. Like I said, we're running the story. Get me the copy as fast as you can and include the pictures of the blood. You know, we never got back with Amanda about that dinner invitation. You want to have her over? Mm -hmm. I want to ask her out. What? Yeah, you heard me. Dad? You mean like on a date? Yeah, with you and Buck. He's coming in this weekend, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just really surprised. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Oh, me? Make a big deal? Like somebody else I know? Dad, you made such an event out of Buck and I, I was afraid you were going to start selling tickets. <laughs> And besides, I don't know how I feel about double dating with Daddy-O. Oh, I've only meant to encourage you <laughs> to, you know, send the right signals. Yeah, believe me, Buck's getting all the signals he needs. Oh. <laughs> so, have you kissed him? <laughs> no comment. Hmm, mm-hmm. That's a yes <laughs> if I ever heard one. <laughs> like I said, he's getting all the signals he needs. Mm. <laughs> Hand me some more of those newspapers there. Sure. Thanks for helping with all this stuff. Listen, Chloe, 
why don't you come with me? <laughs> we'll hop in the car right now, get some of your stuff, and we'll both move to New York. Oh, yeah, that'd be appropriate. I can just see... Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. No, don't worry about it. I got it. Well, this box is ready to load in the car. Hey, what's this? There'll be no tears here. Come on, there's five more glasses in that set. You'll never miss me as much as I'll miss you. Stop. Come here. I'll come back as often as I can. You'll meet up with your dad when he comes to New York, and, well, I'll have reasons to come here. What reason? The Chicago office is closing. This reason. You reason. I'm sorry. But this is gonna be so hard. I know. No, you don't. <laughs> Buck, you can't say you care for me as much as I care for you. Chloe, look at me. Look at me. I don't ever want to hear you say that again. But, Buck, it's true! Did you hear me? Don't say it again. Don't imply it. Don't even think it. Chloe, there is no possible way you could care for me more than I care for you. You are my whole life. I love you, Chloe. Don't you know that? How would I know? Did you kiss me just because you're leaving? Don't ever doubt my love for you, Chloe. Ever. But... Promise. I promise... that I love you, too. And uh, as we pull into the airport, I'm still giving him the gospel, just struggling to make it clear with the language problem and the traffic. And all of a sudden, the cab driver turns around and grabs my arm and says, Hey, when you're done with him, I want to pray. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I, I got a hundred stories like that of God making something happen at just the right time. Oh. And you met Mrs. Ben Judah, as I understand. Mm, oh, what, what a dear lady. I, I pray for her and her children every day. You know, mm. they, they are in constant danger because of Zone's message. I, I only wish I could have met him face to face. Bruce, with all you've seen and, and the things you're studying, yeah. what's next? What can we look forward to? Well, that's part of why I wanted us to get together. We know that after the signing of the covenant with Israel, there's a, a time of peace, which we're in now. Once the next three horsemen of the apocalypse appear, 17 more judgments will come in rapid succession, Whoa. and that will lead to the glorious appearing of Christ. As best as I can tell, the next event is the end of that peace, an intense persecution of believers. That could be tomorrow, it could be six or eight months from now. Mm. The other reason I wanted us to get together, uh, you've seen it on the news. Tonight's the anniversary. It doesn't seem like a year. Mm -hmm. it seems like a lifetime ago. A year ago, tonight, I came to this church for help. Rayford, you came, mm. Chloe, and... And I remember the first time you walked in that door, Buck. Yeah, so do I. I want to be there for anyone who wants that same kind of help. Whether it's here in Chicago, in Israel, or Romania, wherever God leads me. I, I, I don't know exactly what's ahead. Though I'm reasonably sure we're in for some very rough times. As long as God gives me breath, I'll talk of his love and, and the coming judgment. I'll warn people to get ready. It's the reason I'm here. It's the reason we exist. The tribulation force. The, the tribulation force. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Tribulation Force by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick. Directed and produced by Todd Bustine. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.